Thomas here with Much Props, gonna give you another how-to video. Today, I am once again working on my Viking Link cosplay. It has been a bit since I have put anything onto this build. It is getting pretty close to the end. That being said, I wanted to add some embellishments, some flair, some things that are highly unnecessary and probably improbable. Um, like the fact that most of my build is not historically accurate to the Viking era, nor is it accurate to the Legend of Zelda. It is a mashup of the two along with my own flair and tastes along the way. Uh, this is no exception to any of the other ones. I realized that in Viking times, women wore brooch chains, not men. I prefer symmetry to historical accuracy, sorry. Uh, the men would typically wear a clasp off to one side to hold their cloak together. Uh, the women would wear the, the brooches on each side. So that's what I'm going to try and tackle today is designing a medallion for each side connected with some chain. And hopefully it'll give my cloak that has yet to been built um, some flair. So without further ado, um, Let's get to building. This will definitely be a long video, so hold on to your hats as we try and uh, knock through this. For these custom cosplay builds, I like to get out some concepts on paper or my iPad to flesh out ideas. I came up with several ideas in about an hour and looked at them for almost as long, trying to decide which one I liked the most. Luckily, I have a Patreon group that I can have help me on decisions like this with projects sometimes. I set up a poll and let them decide which of the six I drew would make it as a build. If you enjoy what I do, becoming a Patreon member would help me out a ton. I'm a teacher by day and do this prop making by night and it would really help. You get access to sneak peeks, polls, and other various content that comes up. Now past this shameless plug, I look at various Viking symbols and Zelda symbols to incorporate it into the concept. The Zelda symbols are the sage medallions from Ocarina of Time and the symbols on the perimeter are Viking runes. So once the two on the left were selected by my Patreon members, I drew a digital version of the outside band in Procreate on my iPad. It's a drawing app. These parts will be laser cut to get a nice crisp line. I'm engraving them on some 1 8 inch acrylic on my Glowfish. The symbols on the bottom band are from the Veg Vizier symbol. I think it's technically an Icelandic folk stave that has been incorporated into Viking lore. Don't call me on that, I'm not sure. There's like a bunch of debate. I'm not up on all of it. I liked how it looked, so I used it. For the rest of the medallion, I am going to hand sculpt it. These laser cut pieces will just act as a nice border for my Zelda components. I'm using some Sculpey, various clay tools, and my monster hands to try and carve some geometric shapes. I make each little part off to the side, 
when I get it to where I want it to be, I try and combine it with the rest of the build to uh, build it. Here is a nice shot of my huge noggin getting in the way of the camera. I added a hammered texture in between each of these shapes with a ball stylus and pushed in new parts with a silicone tipped tool. It is definitely tedious work. Once done, I plop both clay medallions into my oven at 275 degrees Fahrenheit for about 30 minutes. When I went to glue on my border details to the medallion, I realized that the clay had warped a little in the oven. The middle bowed out a little now, so the ring will not sit flat on the clay. I could try and sand it flush, but instead I decided to use some freeform air by Smooth On to fill the gap not a sponsor. This stuff takes about 24 hours to cure rock hard and can be sanded back to give me a flush outside edge. Wear gloves while working with this epoxy clay and wear a respirator when you sand it back. Now the super fun task of more sanding. I already sanded the edges even. I also need to rough up the surface of the acrylic sheet and sand the inside portions of the medallion to ready them for paint. I used some regular 220 grit sandpaper as well as some little sanding stick tools to get into the harder to reach places.
I'm sure this is probably overkill, but I wasn't sure how well the three different materials would hold up with each other over time, so I decided that I was going to mold and cast them. I start this process by building a box to glue the medallion in to pour the mold on. I am using some corrugated plastic and hot glue to build my box. I cut them to fit the object with plenty of clearance on all sides. Just make sure that when you glue the sides on to layer the hot glue on all the seams lines. I do it both on the inside and the outside of each joint. Hot glue is cheap, silicone molding material is not. A quick spray with some mold release, some gloves slapped on, and I'm ready for molding. I made a video a while back of miniature Majora's masks using four different molding products. I'll link it below. You should check it out if you're interested in learning how to kind of mold. Not that I'm an expert, but I dabble. I compare them by their price, cure times, rigidity, etc. This is some of the BB Dino that I had left over from that build. Mix equal parts A and B by volume. Thoroughly make sure to incorporate them into each other and then brush it onto the details of your cast before filling them up. This prevents like air bubbles. It is ready to demold in about six hours. Make sure you thoroughly mix the parts together to ensure it sets properly. Also read the instructions and the safety guidelines for use because this stuff can be pretty nasty. After a quick demonstration of my dominance over corrugated plastic and hot glue, I can demold the sculpts. My casting material of choice is Smooth Cast 300 for no particular reason other than that's what I'm familiar with. It's a bit expensive, but it's pretty easy to use, sets super quick, and is extremely durable. Just like the molding material, it's equal parts A and B by volume. I put on my gloves, measure out the parts into separate cups, then pour them together. Thoroughly mix them while trying your best not to agitate bubbles too much into the mix, though Smooth On does a pretty decent job of not having too many bubbles. You have to work quickly as it produces a thermal reaction when it kicks, getting to over 210 degrees Fahrenheit, ouchie. It will go from a clear liquid to a solid white when done. It can be demolded in about 10 minutes and it fully cures around 4-6 to six hours according to the instructions.
that mold release makes these castings easily pop out of the mold and extends the life of them. Not that I'm going to start mass producing these medallions, but I could if others were interested. Once I pull them out, I sand off the edges and flatten the back to ready the surface for paint. I spray paint the medallions black with some spray paint to ready them for the next step. While my medallions are drying, I might as well make the chains for the clasps. I got these chain mail links off of Amazon. I know you can make them using a drill and a dowel rod, but it's super convenient to have them pre-done and they come in all these colors and I don't really need that much. I'm sure this will be hard to see and even harder to understand because I'm slightly off frame. I'll link the tutorial I used to figure this out in the description. There's a lot of people out there doing this and they they make much better videos of hands up close. Basically, I'm bending together loops into a pattern to make a chain. I'm using what's called a Byzantine or Byzantine or however you say it, B Y Z A N T I N E pattern, which of course is not Viking, but pure aesthetic choice I made. You just need two pairs of pliers, some links, and a large amount of patience. Once you get the hang of it, just put on some TV or an audiobook and zone out while you work. For the medallions, I'm going to gild them with some faux gold leaf. You slather on some gilding adhesive or sizing as it's also known, let it sit for a couple of minutes then stick on the sheets. I also have some varnish that I'll use once the gold leaf is on to seal it. I bought this pack off of Amazon and it had like five or six different metallic finishes. You pull the sheet out of its sleeve and simply drape it across your glued item. Once the surfaces come in contact with each other, the sheet will permanently stick on there. You take a brush and knock off the excess. This stuff gets all over the place, turning into glitter basically when you knock it off. I'll have little gilding twinkles on my face and fingers and hands and every surface in the build room for weeks. Hooray. The application, it's well worth it. The finish is awesome.
to help my detail stand out a little bit more and tie it back into some of the other parts that I've made previously with gold and silver, I'm hitting the inside with a metallic silver acrylic paint pen. This one's a little bit smaller than the ones I normally use and will help me to get into tighter places. After this, I varnish my medallions. These bits are way too shiny for my taste, of course, so in much props fashion, I need to dirty them up a bit with some brown and black acrylic paint. I push it into the cracks and crevices, then wipe away the high points with a paper towel. The last step is to join the medallions together with the chain I made earlier. I hand drill some small holes into the sides of my casting, screw in a couple of small screw eyelets, then I simply take one of the links and connect the chain to it. I still need to figure out how I will attach this to my cloak, but that is a problem for future Thomas to worry about. Friday is upon us and I need to wrap this long video up. we are finished here is the end result overall not too terribly difficult of a build but there were a lot of steps involved that i hadn't really contemplated um, taking it from the sketch to transferring it over to my ipad then transferring that to an svg to print off the perimeters and then sculpt these and mold them cast them uh, it, it was a bit much uh, i didn't think i was going to get done really this was kind of down to the wire as far as wrapping all of it up and I still need to attach this properly. It's kind of just draped with safety pins right now. I realize not, not in any way 100% accurate or even close to that for the Viking era. Lots of kings and other civilizations and fantasy type genres out there have this type of thing on costumes. I just kind of like the drapery of it across along with these cool decorative elements that tie both things into each other. But yeah, maybe you will try and make some jewelry yourself and impress your friends with your ability to come up with concepts that are unique to multiple worlds and none at the same time. Maybe you'll get some. Yay! And inevitably they're going to ask you, how'd you make that? You can give them one of these, tell them much props. I, I did paint it up in um, other colors too. Um, maybe I'll give these away or something. I'll let you hold on to this one. All right. Peace out.
Lucky, if you enjoy what I do here on YouTube and want to continue to see builds like this one, please consider joining these awesome people listed here with me over on my Patreon to build a bigger, better, more creative community together. Thank you.